you mentioned a number of minerals, supplements. Uh, if someone's looking to start a supplement program, that can be pretty daunting because there's so many different products yes. out there. And it's hard to narrow down just to say that, you know, everybody should have X, Y, and Z. But mm -hmm. in your opinion, if someone is looking to start, where should they start? What are the top two or three supplements that almost everybody's deficient in anyway? Well, my, my good friend, uh, Christopher Barr, maybe you've seen him. Mm -hmm. He's known as Not a Doc. He's a, he's mm -hmm. a character, absolute character. I love him. He talks about, and he's written about uh, selenium and chromium, different things like that from a food-grown perspective. And he actually has utilized the research as it's often not read in regards to the, some of these basic questions that you ask. And I, I've really adopted a lot of those things along with my homeopathic knowledge and use of silver. And I say some of these key things include the selenium, include the glucose tolerance factor form of chromium, because again, cancer feeds on sugar, sugar mm -hmm. metabolism. If you're not metabolizing and transiting easy in and out of the healthy cells, you don't have enough chromium in your system. Therefore, you will feed the cancer before you will feed your own cells. So chromium becomes another critical area. And I don't mean chromium picolinate or polynicotinate or chromium chloride. We're looking for a genuine food-grown matrix, if you will, of this form, this mineral, that will come in and replenish the body's ability to utilize the sugars that are maybe in the food or in the cells to transit in and out safely without feeding the cancer cells. So that's a critical part of this as well. The silica I mentioned to stop the growth through the connective tissue is going to be great. But what foods will enhance glutathione production, detox pathways? Because cancer is a disease mm -hmm. of toxicity. So in addition to homeopathic drainage remedies, or like Dr. Nick Gonzalez of Gerson talked about coffee enemas, these things are, are vitally critical. Not everybody's willing to do them. But when you look at life or you look at death on the pathway, you begin to sit back and say, OK, it's worth it to do something a little out of my comfort zone even though there are a lot of things that won't be too far out of that comfort zone as far as supplementation choices. Utilizing silver, as we've discussed before, is also critical for immune function, remodulating mm -hmm. immunity, oxygenating the immune cells, and really restoring integrity of the immune system. In any way, shape, or form, you can do that without intoxicating. It's obviously something I would support. There are different pathways to get there, and I like to say to people, you know, don't overanalyze these things. Do simple steps that you know are validated and supported by science as well as clinicians, whether they be doctors or whether they be not a doc, right? Mm -hmm. The point is follow those who are succeeding. Learn from them, apply them, and then individualize based on your needs because one size fits all is not really the way it works in reality. Although I've yet to meet the human being or animal that didn't need a healthy liver to function well. The question mm -hmm. is how do you want to support that liver? And there are a thousand 10,000 different ways to go. Bottom line though, we must, must, must clean up what comes into our body before it gets intoxicating. But if we're already intoxicated, we gotta support that elimination pathway.